Hey, hello, and welcome to the show. It's me, JP. It's time for another weekly edition of JP's Product Pick of the Week. See, it's right there in the name. Uh, welcome, and my apologies if you got tricked by my typo in the blog post, which was uh, linking to last week's product. So I've, I've updated that in case you want to refresh and make everything good again. You can uh, head to this URL right there. Look, I got it. I got it right there. And presumably so is that QR code heading to product ID 5740, not 5766, which was last week's. Uh, 5740-5740. That is this week's product pick of the week. Head on over there. Uh, thanks to DJ Devin3 in the chat over in our Discord for letting me know that I had the wrong, uh, wrong link there. So thank you. Uh, that's our chat, by the way. If you're somewhere like Twitch or Facebook and you're wondering, hey, where is all the chat going on? Uh, we have a chat that we are checking out over in YouTube, and then we have our Discord server, which is adafru.it slash Discord. Look for the live broadcast chat channel uh, right there, that one right there. That's where this conversation is going on, so uh, head on over there. Uh, so... Before I go any further, however, what I'd like to do is have Lady Ada go back uh, just a little bit in time and tell us about this week's product pick. So please take it away, Lady Ada. Um, okay, with the ANO Rotary. So that's the name of the rotary encoder. It's, it's the part number is called ANO. Uh, so that's why it's called ANO. The uh, rotary encoder with Seesaw. So this is, you know, we've had this encoder for a bit. I love it because it's basically iPod classic rotary encoder where you've got the little uh, click wheel in the center. It's a rotary encoder and then up, down, left, right, and select. But uh, the thing that's a little annoying about it is there's five buttons and two encoder pins and it's a lot of pins. And before you know it, you're like, I've just used half of my Mac controller, GPIO. And, you know, you're constantly pulling the um, encoder. And so why not make it a lot easier for people by making a breakout board? where on the back is an AT Tiny 816, the little um, AVR chip, and it, you know the code is up on GitHub. If you'd like to take a look at how it does this, it can keep track of the encoder, so it just keeps a little counter of how many clicks left or right. It can read the buttons, and it can also uh, have four different address select switches. You can theoretically have 16 of these, all over I squared C, three or five volts. Um, so it's very easy for you to connect this up to your Raspberry Pi, which doesn't even have rotary encoder support, or other single board computer. You can connect it up uh, to a, an Arduino, you can connect it up to a Pico, you can connect it up to pretty much any mic controller, as many as you like. Uh, you can even connect it to a computer um, by going through one of our uh, dev boards or uh, one of our USB to GPIO converters that runs circuit Python. Um, and on board is a little Seesaw chip, and uh, there is an IRQ output if you'd like, but it also works just great over I squared C as long as you don't mind asking it every once in a while, hey, are there any buttons pressed or any uh, rotary encoder um, clicks going on? And uh, that's it. That's the new product. I can, you can show the little demo yeah. video. So this is just uh, the hand, and you can see it's plugged into a seven-segment display, and then you know it just counts up and down as you click the rotary encoder. Test your products. Yes, indeed it is. Uh, this, look right here. I have one. That beauty right there. That is our product pick of the week this week. It is the ANO Rotary Encoder Breakout Board with Stemma QT. That's the exciting new part here. So we've had a very, very similar board previously uh, where you had to solder on pins to use the little pin header there, plug it into a breadboard, and uh, wire it up to your project. Now we can string these together with Stemma QT uh, cables, just like that, and that'll plug into pretty much any board you can imagine. You can use Stemma QT to Stemma QT. We also have adapters that go Stemma QT to Stemma, which is the larger sized one, or Stemma QT to just wires that you can plug into things. Um, these go hand in hand with this ANO click encoder wheel, I'll do the, the dramatic peel, in fact. Let's get that. Uh... Ooh, yeah, get that off of there. That's nice and shiny. It will never be again shiny because you touch it all the time. Uh, but these right here have 
This lady has had a, a unusual pin layout. You can't really fit that onto any kind of breadboard. Um, so you're stuck having to try to wire this uh, in the first place. So that's one use of the breakout board. Uh, however, besides just getting this wired, it's interfacing with it. It has a lot of pins. It uses five different pins just for the up, down, left, right, and center buttons. Uh, and then we have a few pins used for the rotary encoder as well. Uh, and so what we are uh, able to do with this little AVR chip right here is put Seesaw on it so that it can run its own code. So all of the interpretation of those buttons as well as the uh, rotary encoder, that's all done in Stemma on the chip. And then those messages can be sent out over i square c to your microcontroller board, which makes it really easy to work with. Um, let's take a look. In fact, if you go to uh, the main page here, so 5740 is the product ID there. You can see we have uh, about 80 of them in stock, at least when I refreshed a moment ago. And these are uh, half off, so you don't need a coupon code or anything. Just throw these in your cart. You'll get them for half off. You will want to also pick up uh, one of these, the ANO Directional Navigation and Scroll Wheel Rotary Encoder. That's a long product name. Uh, looks like we have about 25 of those in stock right now. We, we tend to get those uh, pretty regularly. But that is what you're going to want to use with this. Uh, if you take a look and scroll down here, you will find some other videos on it, uh, as well as links to projects and learn guides. Uh, here is the main learn guide. This one's by Liz Clark. This takes you through setting it up. Uh, all of the pinouts, if you're going to use the header pins on it. Normally, I think with this one, you'll want to use I2C Stemma QT cable. Uh, so you can see the pinouts here. This has four uh, jumpers on it for adjusting the address, which means you can do 16 of these, 16 unique I2C addresses, put them all on a single bus. So you can just chain them together. If you want to make a bandolier of interface, I don't know what you're up to, but that could be pretty cool. Uh, you can do that. You can set link, 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 link them up to one microcontroller or single board computer or what have you, uh, and then be able to pull all of them and ask them to send updates as you change the scroll wheels, as you change uh, the buttons. And uh, if you take a look a little further down, we have code examples in CircuitPython and Arduino, and I'll show you an example of a little demo project I did using CircuitPython. Uh, there are also some really neat projects. Actually, both of these are from Liz. Liz loves this rotary encoder, uh, click wheel rotary encoder. So she did a wireless BLE scroll wheel. Allows you to both scroll uh, web pages uh, by doing mimicking the mouse scroll wheel. You can USB HID and USB mouse with it. Uh, and she also has it playing Doom. And then this is a recent one Liz did that uses five of these. Uh, again, the wiring was super simple. If you take a look at her, uh, let's see, circuit diagram here, you can see they're just chained together one after another. It's also got some displays in there, a bunch of displays set up. Uh, if you take a look at the uh, wiring page here, you can see some of the, uh, oh, that's just the amplifier wiring, sorry, uh, assembly. Oh no, Stemma wiring, there it is. She made it, she made it easy, I just ignored it. Uh, there you can see a bunch of those uh, linked to each other. And you can do many, many more thanks to the unique I2C addresses. Uh, here is a little demo I did. Uh, let's, nope, not that. Let's go to, uh, how about this view of the world here? So let me get this out of the way. And I'm going to bring up uh, the video editor I use. This is Adobe Premiere. And what I've got is I've, I've built a little uh, Lego enclosure for this, just kind of temporarily hold it in place. But there you can see I've got my ANO rotary scroll wheel click encoder navigational thingamajig. Gosh, I can never remember its name. Uh, the click wheel. I've got the click wheel there. I've got our uh, breakout board. You can see I have a little stem QT cable running to a cutie pie, and then that's off to USB on this very computer. So very dangerous. This is plugged right into the computer I'm, I'm broadcasting from. And what I have it doing is sending USB HID key shortcuts, which can be used to uh, work with my editor. So first of all, you can see here, if I uh, click in my timeline here, I can do some scrolling through as I try to find that exact point where, I'm, where I want to make an edit, let's say. Uh, I can press the center to play. I can... 
left click multiple times to go uh, fast reverse. I can go fast forward like so. Uh, if I find a spot that I want to place an edit, let's say I want to set the in point here, I'm just pressing up on my nav wheel and scroll over here and press down to get the out point. So this is usually used when I'm preparing media and bringing it into uh, the timeline, so taking clips and bringing them into my sequence. Uh, but that's a really simple way to set this up just using CircuitPython and some USB HID commands because like a lot of software, you can control it with uh, USB shortcuts. This, this scrolling, in fact, is just sending the period key rapidly or the comma key when I want to go backwards. So that's uh, a really simple way to use that in Premiere. If you want to take a look at how this is uh, set up, what I'll do is hide Premiere for a moment. And now that this is plugged in, let me come over to Sublime Text and open up code.py that's on this CircuitPy device, a little cutie pie, that's a RP2040 there. Uh, so you can see here in my code, the, the sort of important thing I'm doing is this right here from Adafruit Seesaw, import Seesaw, rotary IO, and digital IO. So rotary IO allows us to read the encoder, digital IO allows us to read the five uh, switches that are uh, these different navigational buttons that I can press, the north, south, east, west, as well as the center button. This is running on the default I square C address. I'm setting my uh, pins to be input with pull up resistor on them for the five buttons, uh, setting those up as Seesaw digital IOs in their uh, relative pins. And then the encoder is set up as an object using rotary IO incremental encoder Seesaw. So all of that is running on the chip right on the breakout board. Uh, and then we have uh, some button states that I'm using, button names. I've set up the key codes I want to use as space bar, I for setting an input, uh, O for setting an out, uh, out point, in point and out point, I should say. Uh, J is the rewind and L is the fast forward. Uh, and then in the main body of the code, all I have to do is say, okay, position equals encoder.position. That pulls the Seesaw chip there to find out what uh, is going on with the, the rotary encoder. If there's a change, I'm just taking the, the difference between the last time I stored the state and the current, and that just helps if I rotate it super fast, we can store up a number of clicks. Uh, and then depending on if that is going up or down, uh, if the delta is greater or less than zero, I will run through and hit the right arrow key for scrolling to the right, and the left arrow key if I've scrolled to the left, sends those over HID, just as if I typed them on the keyboard. Uh, and then we check through all of these buttons to see, has anything been pressed? Has anything been released? If so, I'm gonna press these uh, keyboard shortcuts that I, that I listed there. Uh, so if I go down here and do disco tool, uh, just so you can see the output, I'll scroll, and you can see that relative position as I scroll, the scroll wheel is changing. Uh, I think I'm combating it because I'm also sending, there we go. Uh, I don't know why that's not updating. What happened? I've broken it. Uh, oh, funny. If we go up here, we should be able to see me typing essentially. So those L, I, O, J, space, those are the things that get typed. And then uh, this is sending these arrow key commands. Yeah, that arrow key stuff was battling my... Um, my output in the, uh, the REPL here for some reason. So let me get rid of that stuff there. Uh, so that's how easy it is to use that. You can use it also under Arduino. It's very, very similar setup and there's some sample code there. Uh, and let's see, questions. So uh, looks like a jog wheel for sure. Yeah, it's a really nice jog wheel. It's, uh, it's also small enough to, to use in little uh, sort of handheld devices, which is nice. A little thumb wheel here. You can you can navigate everything just with your thumb, kind of like the old iPods. That was that was so nice when they had a click wheel, a, a real physical click wheel on them. Uh, Aza or Aza, sorry, asks in the Discord, can you use the rotary uh, with a Adafruit macro pad using its Stemma QT connector? Uh, yeah, I don't think I've tried it, but I will say I am 99.999% sure you can because you can plug. Uh, in the Stemma QT device and uh, code that in 
either CircuitPython or Arduino to, to read that. And uh, now you've got a second encoder. We've got one, one uh, push encoder on the macro pad, and then this would give you a second one depending on your needs. So that would be kind of cool. I like that idea. Uh, let me know if anyone has any other questions. Uh, just Joel says, time to make myself a MyPod. Yeah, you can make a very, uh, very personalized iPod with this. Uh, what else have we got to say about it? I think that covers everything, yeah? So uh, head on over here uh, to product ID 5740. Let me see if any are in stock. I'll do a little refresh here. 54 in stock, yeah, so we've, we've sold quite a few, but you can still grab some. You can grab up to 10 of these if you have big, big plans. Just make sure you get yourself uh, the uh, click wheel encoders and, uh, and wire them up and make your project. You know, it's begging to be made into a kind of modernist Etch-a-Sketch, uh, maybe with a little OLED display. That could be kind of fun thing to do. Uh, you can wire up lots and lots of these and, uh, and uh, make some pretty cool projects. So I think we're gonna wrap it up right there. That, that's my product pick of the week this week. Wait, before I say this, I wanna get it right. So this is going in a video. What is your name? Okay. Uh, now it's even right side up. That's my product pick of the week this week. It is the ANO Rotary Navigation Encoder with I square C over Stemma QT. And that is your product pick of the week. For Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park, and this has been JP's Product Pick of the Week. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.